Okay, hi everyone, so I'm SmithyQ. Welcome back to our series on opening principles versus opening traps. I've got a bonus video here. It's gonna be on the wild and the wacky. It's the grub. And the reason I wanna cover this is, well, it's rather unique. That is, all the other videos that I've done in this series have been more or less classical in some respects. Whereas this, the grub is completely unorthodox. When you're looking at unorthodox positions, they tend to have unorthodox tactics. But well, the principles, they're the principles for a reason. And we're gonna see some callbacks to some previous traps anyway. The reason I want to make this video is A, it's just a lot of fun. The grub is a funny opening. But also B, to give a general idea on how perhaps you should face unorthodox openings. We could actually just start right here. Maybe I, maybe I went through those first moves quickly, but the first move is g4 with the idea, okay, black's attacking the pawn, but white doesn't care. Plays bishop g2, black takes the pawn. This is our starting point. And if we're to just ask what has happened, well, white has played g4 and has essentially coerced this bishop out here. And so this bishop is developed early, and that means b7 is weak. And if you were to look at it, and we always think about our tactical weaknesses, the bishop is actually undefended. So in this position, black has two weaknesses, b7 and the bishop on g4. And we're going to see how white's whole idea is try to play against these two things. To start off with, um, white's going to play c4. And again, we can see the idea he wants to open the diagonal, cashing on b7. It makes absolute perfect sense to play something like c6 here. Um, and now let's just look at takes, takes. Uh, I think it probably helped to start with this one. White's attacking the deep, um, the deep pawn twice. What's the most natural move on the position? It's e6. It's the most played move. Should I show you the stats? Yeah, it's a trap. Why? Well, it's an old favorite. Queen goes to a4. Um, we actually started the whole opening principles versus opening trap series on this sort of trap. So this is a full circle callback. And the problem, it's essentially, by playing e6, it's just really unfortunate. The bishop now is stuck. It can't come back to d7 to block, and the bishop's undefended. And so this is where, um, after, sorry, after knight c3, let's get rid of this here. We have a choice of how we want to defend against, um, how we want to defend d5. And this is where knight f6 protects our bishop and protects d5. How do you decide between... Um, e6 versus knight f6 well a big part can actually well a just always calculate calculating is great but b on general principles we noticed at the beginning that this bishop was developed early and it was undefended and so playing knight f6 which defends the bishop just it removes one of our potential weaknesses in this position and so then we only have to really worry about b7 okay let's back up from the beginning so we got g4 takes c4 the most common move here is to take take and then usually it's instead of bringing the knight it's bringing the queen out now it's the exact same trap here it's very tempting to play e6 it's still the most played move unfortunately it's the exact same trap we're coming here you lose the bishop so let's not lose the bishop uh, we're gonna play knight f6 again usually white will not cash in on b7 right away first white will play c3 e6 and then he's gonna take here Attacking the rook, we gotta defend the rook somehow, so let's develop the knight. Because that gets the queen in here. And here comes the sneaky part. Knight goes to b5, threatening this check here on c7. Okay, how do we defend against that? Well, the only real move is bring the rook over, and then white's gonna play here. And just sort of, let me just back up, uh, maybe useful look at the stats just quickly. We can see here that knight takes a7 is um, the only move that's really good for white, and white does win a bit more often than black. Okay, just put it out there. And I think it's really tempting to just look at, um, to get into black's mental space here. Because it's very easy, um, perhaps tilted is the wrong word, but to feel somehow tricked in a position like this. Because it seems as if black has played a whole bunch of natural moves, and yet, in this position, white has managed to win a pawn. And further, white has played a whole bunch of, you know, g4 is a terrible move, and then he's bringing his queen out early, and then he's moving this knight three times in the opening. C can white get away with it? And I think 
two things. One, um, thinking like that can make you think that you have made a mistake. Or B, you press too hard to try and refute White's play. What I mean. From here, it looks like this is the most natural move, in the, and this is. This is played 80% of the time. It's attacking the queen, and it's um, attacking the knight. The queen only has one square that still defends the knight. And now we notice that that queen is undefended. Which means if we were to play this, aha, now the knight is pinned. So if the knight moves, he loses the queen. The knight's attacked twice, and so it looks like we're just winning a piece. And this is where, where I mentioned at the beginning, unorthodox openings tend to have unorthodox tactics in here. White actually has a brilliant, and if we look at the stats, this is just like what makes the, the grob the grob, this knight b5. Wow. So one of the things we realize is that the black queen is also undefended. We're attacking the rook. What do we do? Well, if we take, unfortunately, after knight takes c7, it's check. We're picking up the, um, the knight, and uh, you're just uh, down a buttload of material, and you're going to lose. 94% uh, of the time, that is. Oh, no. An incredibly easy trap to fall into. Why? Well, one, it's uncommon. You're very rarely going to see something like this. Um, one in a million type thing. But two, it feeds right into that natural mindset that I talked about, where you're thinking that White has made some mistakes, and so we need to be able to punish him. And it looks, again, like this is uh, absolutely lights out, but the problem, brilliant knight goes to b5. Now, full disclosure, uh, White is basically losing in this position if Black plays the other rook move. Rook goes to b8. Same thing, um, after the queen go to moves, we're then going to chase the queen further away. And now, it's the same idea. It's the exact same pin, but there's no knight b5 goes to knight c7 fork anymore. Uh, and then, um, so for example, after just like knight f3, now we can move back and the, the knight is lost. Right. The, the only way this trap worked is having this rook on c7. Because it's not on c7, there's no funny um, forks, there's no funny tricks, and then um, white's just toast. And it's a little bit unfortunate because I don't have any easy way of telling you how to find or how to decide between these two moves, especially in blitz. <laughs> I, I, there just isn't. It comes down to sort of calculation. On the... Nice side, once you fall for the trap once, you'll never fall for it again. I'm not sure if that's how helpful that is. But I do have a suggestion that comes back all the way earlier. Two suggestions, in fact. One, in this position, is to realize... Well, screw it. Let's just go through it. Let's just take this pawn. You, you want to take on b7? That's fine. Let's go here. You want to take? Okay. Look at this position. What do you see? Here's what I see. Uh, black actually has three pieces developed. Yep. Queen is attacking this rook, which is sitting way over here. We're ready to play e5, control the center, get our pieces developed. We're going to castle. Everything is fine. White has no development, and it's not even easy for white to develop. Um, not sure where this bishop's going to go. If this king were to castle, oh, open g-file. If you were to castle this way, open c-file. Is he going to stay in the center that's wide open? It's actually really hard for white to play. And notice that, again, sorry, I'll just throw on the stats here. After f3 here, um, attacking the uh, at the bishop, it, it, it's a pin. So we don't, have, we don't have to worry. You can just play e5, and black is scoring tremendously well in this position. And there's absolutely no traps. There are literally no traps for um for black to fall into yeah there is nothing how can there be traps when white has no development and i'm not just saying this i'm pretty sure i have a game uh, not as white come on my Jess. there it is i'm not just you know uh, putting this out there i'm putting my money where my mouth was i've played this when i play the grob and uh i have 100 percent uh, success with it woohoo <laughs> um so that's one idea is just literally falling into the uh, 
the trap, so to speak, just doesn't work. But then also, if the whole point of this is that early bishop comes to, um, we develop the bishop really early to hit, sorry, let's see if I can actually talk. The whole problem with this is the bishop's developed early and white is going to get counterplay, so to speak, on that b7. Is that it's 100% possible for you to just not, you know, uh, do that. You can just not take on this. Or, like, you could, for example, just play e5 at the beginning. Develop completely normal. Um, right? e5, d5, if I could draw arrows, c6, and then basically no traps. That is also a possibility. Um, not engaging the unorthodox person in their own turf. Or, again, you lose to it once, and then you never lose it to it again because, you know, you figure it out. Uh, most of these, um, you know, they're one-move wonders. Anyway, that's it. I hope this was a nice little finale to the series, uh, just highlighting one unorthodox trap. Uh, kind of an interesting one, and then also maybe some suggestions on how to play against unorthodox openings in particular. You don't have to think about absolutely refuting them, um, because you got to be careful. That thought process often leads you uh, astray. Just finish uh, development and go forward, and you'll probably be fine. That's going to be it for here. Do the YouTube things. Thank you so much. Uh, it'll probably be a small delay before I make another video. I'm not sure what the next series is. But uh, there we go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.